Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now I was lucky enough to attend in March 2018 the Maths Conf that was held in Kettering and if you've never been to one of uh, these Maths Confs that are put on by LaSalle I would wholeheartedly recommend them. Just google LaSalle Maths Conf and you, you'll find the details. They're held about three times a year. Anyway the start of each of these ma <coughs> Maths Confs, excuse me, always involves speed dating and that's where two teachers get together one has two minutes and the other has two minutes to share a resource an idea something they've been working on a question and so on and it's absolutely superb because within the space of half hour you've learned so many different ideas you've got to meet and talk to so many different people now one of the ideas from speed dating that was doing the rounds back in march was this do it, twist it, deepen it. And I am so, 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 so happy that this idea has now found its way to Tez via the author who's going by the name of Man MHK because I think this is absolutely superb. So what does it involve? Well, the resource itself consists of a PowerPoint and two worksheets. Uh, the PowerPoint um, opens up fairly, fairly straightforward, just a do it um, factorizing uh, expressions, I assume from um, a, a prior lesson, just practicing that skill. And then we get on to the, the meat of it. So we're onto area of a triangle. So uh, this is the worked example phase of the lesson where we're just gonna uh, dis di discuss where this formula comes from, uh, learn how to what, what the letters in the formula mean and so on. And then we get on to practicing using the formula. So nothing amazing so far. I know what you're thinking, why on earth have I picked this particular resource? I mean, it's very nicely laid out and everything, but we've seen this kind of stuff before. But this is where I like it. So now we're about to enter the do it phase of the lesson. And the do it is all about developing procedural fluency, getting students comfortable with it. So you get a worksheet like this, and there's plenty of triangles on there, maybe 12 triangles on there. And students are simply applying the formula to work out the area of each of these triangles. Um, now, the questions themselves, absolutely fine, but I like it when it kicks in here because all of a sudden we have a switch of units. So we go in centimeters and millimeters, we've then got centimeters and meters, millimeters, and then we've got 0 0.9 centimeters and so on. So students are having to think a bit deeper, think a bit harder, and then it gets pretty tough when we get to here, 80 millimeters, 0 0.05 meters and so on. But that's, this stage is all about developing students' fluency and confidence with applying the formula. So that's the do it phase. Now we go into the twist it phase. So the twist it will probably start with a worked example like this. So you can see here that this time we're told the area um, and we've got the base, can we work out the vertical height? And notice again, we're in trouble here because we've got millimeters squared and we've got centimeters squared and so on. So that's gonna chuck students off autopilot. But then this is what I love because it comes with a worksheet here and we've got three other twisted questions where this time students are presented with working out and students have to think, where's it gone wrong? And this is all about developing fluent uh, reasoning abilities. So taking the skill that they've learned in the do it phase, then can they apply that skill in the twisted phase to think a bit deeper about the particular topic? Love that. And I should say as well, all answers are included, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we get into the deep in it phase. Now the deep in it phase, is probably my favorite bit of it. And this is where anything could happen. We're taking the skill, but it's not apparently obvious where that skill is in the question. We're bringing in lots of other different questions. We're bringing in context and so on. And this is where it gets kids really, really, really thinking. And again, possibly we, we go through a worked example here, and then we're gonna hop to the worksheet and we've got three deep in it questions. And we can see we've got one similar to the worked example there loads of chat going on they're the ones kids i find really struggle with when it comes to exams kind of four or five multi-mark context questions then we've got here a square and a rectangle a square, a square and a triangle floating around and then we're bringing in it to play a little bit of algebra so the deep in it is when kids have to think really 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 hard about it and we've got all the answers so we've got the answers to the do it uh, worksheet and then we've got the answers to the twist it and deepen it so what I like about this is, you might be watching this thinking, okay, well that's fine, yeah, it's just some basic questions and then some problem solving questions. But whenever I interviewed Doug Lemov for my Mr. Bart Maths podcast, Doug, Doug is the author of Teach Like a Champion, he stressed the importance of putting a name on something, a name that's catchy and memorable. So in Teach Like a Champion, he, he uses names like Show Call and Culture of Error. 
And the importance of ascribing a name to something is it just makes it a bit more concrete in your head. You're not trying to scramble around thinking, oh, what, what's that thing when you show students work at the front of your lesson and you discuss common, oh, forget that. It's show call. Once you put a name on it, it makes it more memorable. So that's what I like about this. Uh, do it, twist it, deepen it. It just means that I can use that terminology to students and that they in their head then know, okay, so I've done the do it phase. Now I'm struggling with the twist it phase. They know where they are in this learning journey, on this path to real deep understanding. So using terminology like this, I think it's really, really, really important because it creates a shared dialogue, a shared language. And so much of the stuff in maths, when we try to define it and put words on it, it's flipping difficult to do. So I want you to be able to use and apply your skills in different contexts. What are you on about, sir? No, I just want you to be able to successfully do the deepen it phase. I want you to be able to do the twist it phase. So I just love this kind of shared language. So for that reason, and the fact that this is just a really, really well-structured resource, I just had to make it resource of the week. So if you use this resource, hop back on the resource page, leave a review for the, uh, for the author, and share how you've used it. I hope you find it useful and I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.